Families are cutting back on spending and making hard choices as the cost of living crisis bites. Inflation at 30-year high. ASB says your average Kiwi family will spend, get this, an extra 150 bucks a week on living costs this year compared to last. Grant Robertson, the Minister of Finance and also Deputy Prime Minister, is with us this morning. Good morning. I think people are, are hungry for information at the moment, um, Minister, because as you know, budgets are tight. We're starting to try and do you know, more with less. I wondered for yourself personally, have you had to cut back on anything? Oh, well, uh, Ryan, I'm well paid in the job that I do and, and always try to be careful with my spending. Good Presbyterian boy from Dunedin. Uh, but I recognise, particularly for those on low and middle incomes, this is a really challenging and difficult time. We are seeing price increases across the board. Um, this is something that's happening around the world and it's the reason why we've significantly increased the support we're giving to low and middle income people through things like the family tax credit, childcare support, student allowances, income support measures so we certainly recognise the pressure that those low and middle income families are under. None of those announcements though were made because of the cost of living crisis, they were made before. So I want to talk about this budget well, and you've mentioned that it's difficult and it's hard for those middle families who are feeling the squeeze at the moment. Is there going to be anything targeted income help or tax relief for those in the so-called squeezed middle in your budget? Well, it's really important that one of the most recent announcements we've made is the fuel excise duty cut that actually does provide support for all New Zealanders who use a vehicle. We've also got half price public transport for those who aren't uh, driving their own vehicle as well. And that's in the case of a, you know, a 60 litre tank, that's up to $17 a, a refill, probably $17 a week for a family yeah. that they are not having to you pay had at to the be, moment. So to, we have to be fair, that. You had to be dragged kicking and screaming into that, didn't you? Well, I don't think that's fair at all, Ryan. We moved quickly when we saw that price spike happen as a result of the war in Ukraine. And those, you know, those increases that came in on the 1st of April, they carry on for people through this period. On the 1st of May, the winter energy payment kicks in. That's also for superannuitants and those on income support. So we are doing what yeah, we can to focus again, on low- and middle-income people. Yeah, but again, all of those announcements already made, decisions already signed off, well before the cost of living crisis, which your government's now acknowledged. So what is going to happen? For the, what's your message to those squeezed middle New Zealanders this morning with the budget coming up and they're looking at, do I scrap my kids' sports subs? What am I going to cut from my budget? What's your pitch to them this morning, Minister? Well, the budget that we're going to put forward is going to deliver to New Zealanders the public services they need. They need strong health services. They need good schools. They want to see good transport networks. You've just been talking about issues to do with the road toll. All of those things are important. We've also got to be planning for the future so that we're not so reliant on the things where we are seeing inflation, be that the use of oil or making sure that we've got better prices at the supermarkets. So we will have a budget that sets and gets the balance right. We always look for ways that we can support people, but we do have a lot of responsibilities and a lot of calls on the government's funding. OK, so just for the absence of doubt, Tax relief, you're rolling out tax relief, adjusting those tax brackets, we're rolling that out too, and no targeted support in this budget for you know, your family on 100k with two kids. Well, I don't think this is a budget where tax cuts are the right thing to do, and neither did the IMF when they were out here. The kind of things the National Party's proposing with people earning over $180,000 getting the greatest benefit from that just simply isn't the right thing to do at the moment. We want to continue to support New Zealanders. We want to make sure that we are targeting yep, that it's... support in ways that benefits them and balancing that with investing in the health system and the education system and the core public services okay. we rely on. This you know, we'll strike a balance in the budget, Ryan. Okay. We always do. Um, but obviously I'm also not going to announce it today either. But, but this is the thing. This is my point. You started this interview saying it is a very challenging and difficult time for Kiwi families at the moment because they're squeezed. And then you are dangling a carrot with potential targeted funding to help alleviate some of that pain that they're feeling budgeting for their school kids to go and do sport, etc. Um, why can't you tell us now if they're going to get more money? <laughs> because the budget doesn't get announced until May the 19th. But, Ryan, What's I've also been clear that the there's, focus there's of this... There's pre-budget announcements the up the wazoo. Of this 
we do do pre-budget announcements, but I don't think any government in the history of governments in New Zealand has announced the budget before the budget. Um, what I'm saying to you, and what I've been saying since late last year, is that a core focus of this budget will be resetting our health system, making sure that New Zealanders actually get good quality health care wherever they live, whoever that they are, making sure that we've got to focus on those long-term issues that will help New Zealand's economy grow, getting on top of climate change, and making sure we do the basics right. We are very well aware of the pressure that's on households. It's the reason why we've done the things we did on the 1st of April, why we cut fuel tax, why we're bringing the winter energy payment in. So I don't think it's fair to say those are only things that have previously been thought about. I can tell you, for instance, the family tax credit change happened because we knew that there were going to be a spike in inflation and we made that decision late last year. We made the fuel excise decision this year in the face of the spike in petrol prices. So we are reacting and we are supporting, but we've also got a lot of long term issues that New Zealand needs to get on top of. All right, let's talk about some of the government spending because of course your political opponents have got something to say about this. Um, and people are looking to you now as to, you know, everybody is sort of in charge of the purse strings of their own homes and they look to you as the Minister of Finance for what you have been doing. And some of your spending and the, from the COVID fund in particular um, comes to mind where when it was set up you said it would be strict and used for our response to keep Kiwis safe and for an immediate economic recovery. And then in that very strict fund, we've had money go to cameras on fishing boats, uh, horse racing, $52 million, $87 million for internet modems for students. Um, there's been $374 million on arts grants, including $17 million on art therapy. And I think people are going to start looking at things like this and saying, what did we get for that? Was that money well spent? Do you think it is? I do, and I think it's really important to remember that the fund was set up as both an immediate response fund in terms of the health issues, uh, the wage subsidy program, and that's by far and away the largest um, part of this fund. You know, $23 billion odd dollars that's gone into supporting businesses, gone into supporting households um, via direct support as well as through the inland revenue. Um, but if we just pick out a couple of the things you mentioned there, uh, the modems was to make sure that children could learn from home where they did not have the internet in place. That was a really important th thing to do in COVID that also has a long-term benefit. The arts grants that you're talking about, the work for our artists in New Zealand dried up when COVID hit and has been a real struggle since then. About so 17 million on art therapy. actually kept artists in work. But, but Ryan, we've got 3.2% unemployment at the end of this. I stood in the theatre that I'm in right now and I had a Treasury report in front of me that said we were going to have 10% unemployment. And we said we weren't prepared to put up with that. And I'm proud of a 3.2% result. I'm proud of 5% average annual growth. I know it's tough at the moment for people. And we go through our spending every budget to make sure that it's value for money. And I think New Zealanders have been well served All by right. the approach that we've taken. OK. All right. Fair enough. Um, very quickly, this is just a quick one. On the COVID isolation period, you know, I think it's seven, is it seven days at the moment and you, your partner's got to do it too if you're living with them. Are you going to change that any time soon? No, I don't have uh, any advice that we will. We continue okay. to believe that the isolation period is a really important part of limiting the growth, uh, spread rather, of COVID. And, you know, alongside wearing your mask, getting boosted and doing all the basics right, we still think it's an important part of our public health mix. All right, Minister, thank you very much for your time this morning. Really appreciate it. The Finance Thanks, Minister, Grant Robertson, with us this morning.